Hi, my name is Tim Wilson, and this is a demo of the Liquor Inventory Control Tool that I built in Microsoft Excel. This video is for bar owners and managers who want to get control of their pour accuracy, as well as potential employers, because as of today, January 28th, 2015, I am currently on the job market. So if you see skills that would be useful to your organization, please do get a hold of me. This is the Liquor Inventory Control Tool dashboard, where you get the reporting that will help you get control of your pour accuracy. You can see here in column W, uh, the header column will tell you what the overall accuracy is for all of your bottles, and you can also see row by row what the individual accuracies are for each of your liquors. Uh, that's for a given time period, and you can change that time period here in column N from and to, uh, and it'll give you an option of everything, every date that you've uh, done any sort of uh, measurement. Um, and you can go back in time and kind of compare uh, how you've improved over time. So if we go all the way back from the 16th to the 22nd of December, we can see that our accuracy was 83. And if we fast forward to something closer to today, say the 12th, uh, you'll notice that the 2 is going to automatically update since the new from is later than the old 2. Automatically updates, shows you what it was for that day. I want to see more like a week. So let's see those 12, 13 days or so. Our accuracy for those was about 93%. So yes, they've definitely made some uh, improvements there at Pizza Schmizza. Uh You can see it both in shots, you know, overuse and underuse, as well as in dollars. So you can see what the potential revenue is and you know how much you've lost due to over pouring and servers pouring free shots for their friends. Um, in addition to getting control of your pour, uh, cost pour accuracy, I through K, columns I through K here will help you with liquor inventory ordering. Uh, in column I, you can see what the current inventory levels that you have on hand are, and in K, you can see what the projected inventory would be after so many dollars worth of total liquor sales, which you enter right here in J6. So let's say I think I'm going to do $3,000 worth of sales over the weekend. Based on historical spreads, it's going to say, if you're doing $3,000 in total sales, this is how much uh, you're going to be selling for each um, liquor that you have in stock. This is how many shots you're going to have. And after you sell that much, uh, this is going to be your ending inventory. So you say, okay, I need to definitely run a liquor order for all of those things. Good thing, you can just click a button. I want anything that's projected to have less than one bottle. Order me a 14-day supply, and you can change those numbers as you like and that's going to populate this order form right here automatically for you. So very convenient. Uh, you'll see here Glenfiddich 12 year, uh, it says needed, that's my bottle weight check because you need to have an empty and a full weight in order for this, to, uh, this tool to be useful. Um, if you don't have them, you can uh, estimate them and you can do that here in the add bottle measurement uh, user form. Glenfiddich 12, uh, you click on that and it'll say I've got an empty of 603 but you can go ahead and uh, either enter in the full if you have an actual full, which is always more accurate, but you can approximate it based on its liquor type. Uh, Glenfiddich is a scotch with an alcohol by volume between 35 and 45 percent, which in general has a density at around 0.97 grams per milliliter. I got that number partially off the internet and partially based on some of the measurements that I've done myself. So yes, go ahead and approximate it and then you can say submit. It'll disappear from there. You can do the same thing with something there where you have the full and not the empty, it will also approximate the empty for you. You can go ahead and submit that. Exit out, and you'll see that Glenfiddich down here has been populated with that information, and you can now get uh, good reporting out of it. So, in addition to um, filling in the blanks, you can also change bottle measurements. So say like you approximate it, but that ends up not being a good approximation. You can modify liquor info. Click on that button right there. And let's say I found out that uh, Bacardi 151 is actually heavier than I originally thought. A full bottle is actually heavier, meaning that the liquid inside of there is actually heavier. So uh, let's say I want to change it to 1350. You'll see in this row 9 that the information is going to change. It's going to become more accurate. It could go up. It could go down. Uh, it's not going to be much, but the point is it's going to be more accurate. So there you go. Changed a little bit. You can go ahead and exit out of there change all sorts of information in that user form. So there you go, our, our dashboard is now complete, but uh, we need to figure out how to get good data into that dashboard, and that's what these three buttons here are for, adding inventory, measuring inventory, and entering sales. So let's start at the top, adding inventory. 
So all of these user forms are designed with ergonomics in, in mind. I want them to be as easy for anybody to use as possible. So here we got them alphabetized. You've got active liquors and in inactive liquors. Now you'll see and some of the later, uh, some of the later spreadsheets that, uh, some, I'm sorry, some of the later user forms that the inactives aren't going to be included. You know, like something that I'm not going to be ordering that anymore. I'm going to be taking it you know, out of stock. Uh, Casamigos Reposado's already been discontinued here at Pizza Schmiza. Blanco is on its way out after they finish that bottle. You can deactivate them as you decide I'm not going to use the Chateau Bouvet. I'm not going to be using that anymore. So. Uh, once you're done deactivating things, you can go ahead and start adding inventory, whatever. So uh, if there's something that you've already added one, it'll tell you, hey, you've already added one. You want to add another one? Then it'll tell you I've got two added. Uh, in addition, ergonomically, it would be nice if you could uh, filter by liquor type. And sure enough, you can. Just show me my cordials. Just show me my tequilas. Just show me my vodkas. And let's say I got a whole case of New Amsterdam and I got you know, one of each of these bad boys. So and you can continue until finished. And when you are finished, you can either finalize that intake uh, or not. I decided not to. I want to do something else and come back later. It'll show me what I've already entered and come back later. I want to resume the last one. Let's go ahead and finish this one off. Uh, when you finish it off, it's just going to, anything where you haven't entered inventory, it's going to bring down the previous level of inventory, assuming that you haven't purchased anything. So. I've added some inventory. Now let's go ahead and measure our bottles and see what our usage is like. So this is the inventory measurement um, uh, user form. As you can see, this is also in alphabetical order. And as you can also see, camera or uh, Casamigos tequila is not in there. We deactivated it. Uh, we're not going to be measuring it anymore. I don't want to see it in this user form. It's not in this user form. You'll also notice here I have Castillo Silver 1 and 2. Uh, yet here on the dashboard, I just have Castillo Silver. One and two are for if you have multiple wells, which a lot of bars do. Sometimes they have multiple wells at a longer bar. Sometimes they have a bar upstairs and a bar downstairs. This tool allows you to add as many different uh, wells as you need, and it will all roll in in terms of reporting. It will all roll into the same line on the dashboard. So. Unfortunately, this is all alphabetical right now, not er very ergonomic. Very few bars keep their liquor in alphabetical order. Luckily, we have a custom list order feature. If you click on this, it'll bring you to another user form, which will show you everything that you haven't customized yet, and a custom order, which for this customer, Pizza Schmiza, we've already done their custom order. So uh, if you had anything that had not yet been you know, categorized, you can double click it. It will be here, uh, and you can just double click to add it again. So um, once you've got them in, you can move them up and down as you see fit until you've got your custom order. Use that custom order so that way it makes it really easy for you to do your measurements. So you never have to think about that again. All you have to do when you're ready to measure is grab a bottle, put it on the scale, you know, start from top left corner to bottom right corner and put it on the scale, type in the measurement hit submit. Automatically the next one in the list is selected. This text box is activated. I don't have to click on anything. I just have to go from left to left, left to right, put it on the scale, type in the measurement, hit it OK. Type in the measurement, click OK. Type in the measurement, click OK. Oops, I typed in something that was bigger than the full. You see the full weight there? It's bigger than the full, so it protects me from making those kinds of clumsy errors. Uh, if I do make a fat finger, like I type in 888, but I actually meant 999, I can resubmit that, and uh, as you'll see, it's got the new measurement in there. So um, you'll also notice that sometimes the empties automatically populate. You'll see here the last measurement, 785, is smaller than 888. So obviously, you've done the rest of a bottle and started on a new bottle, and you're down to 888. So it automatically says, "Hey, I've noticed that you got a new bottle." If I type in 888 here. The last measurement was 1,192 grams, therefore, no, there's not obviously an empty, but you can toggle that up and down as you need. Submit, submit, and you can continue until you're done. You can also skip American Harvest Vodka. I hardly sell any of that. I'm not concerned. I'm just smearing off whipped cream. I'm not concerned. Just skip those, and when you skip, it's just going to bring the previous measurement down, the previous inventory level down. Assume that you haven't used any, and you can catch back up later if you need. Uh, once you are done, you can click finished, same as before. You can finalize it or not. 
I will finalize it. Um, anything where I haven't done a measurement, it's going to assume that I haven't used any. Bring down the previous measurement, bring down the previous inventory level, complete that row. That way you have good reporting here in the dashboard. Uh, last but not least, you're going to want to enter some sales to compare your usage to. So this is the sales user form, uh, ergonomically designed, uh, like just like the other ones. Uh, alphabetical makes a lot of sense for sales. Um, Generally on a sales report, it's going to be alphabetical, but a lot of times it's actually going to be by liquor type as well. So you can do um, sort these by liquor type as well. And once you've entered them, you can, oh, you can do it in shots or in dollars. Shots is obviously easier. It's one digit instead of, you know, three digits in a decimal. So, um, but I've seen some sales reports that only give it in dollars. So I give you the option. Um, and if you need to, you know, come back and resubmit something, you can so and once you're done with this two shots here one shot there now once you're done with that same thing you want to finalize it if you don't finalize it it assumes that you haven't made any sales come back to your dashboard and you've completed your uh, inventory adding measuring and sales for the week and you've got updated information and it was quick and painless and easy so um, if you're a bar manager or owner and you're interested in purchasing this software, get a hold of me. And if uh, you're interested in my spreadsheeting abilities, also please do get a hold of me. And thank you for watching this video.